Yeah, I got my own lane and shit. So the yeah. people fuck with me. They fuck with Slick. I know. I know you've been, you know, go going to get it and you know striving and I don't. I want to say hustling, but not not in the sense of you know with the connotation of it. Like you know, like grinding. Like since you was young. I'm a grinder, bro. So so what what do you feel about like? Like politics on uh, um, Baltimore, like when you got a lot of outsiders, like conservatives, and they see the squeezy kids, and they, you know, they paint all these narratives or um, highlight certain situations to try to group everybody in. How how do you feel about the younger generation and their grind to go get it? Um, I you know I don't think it's nothing that change. Like it always been. Um, I'm from Cherry Hill, but I grew up on Pennsylvania Avenue at the time. You know what I'm saying? So, like, always seen squeegee boys under the bridge right there on Martin Luther King Boulevard in Franklin. Like, that was always a hub for squeegee boys. Some of my friends used to squeegee at that Exxon gas station right there on Marbury. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's when I was a kid. So, it always been a thing. I just think now that everything, like, on social media, like, everything... You know what I'm saying? Like, we got phones and shit. So, like, everything publicized or whatever. But I say that to say, you know, Baltimore always been fucked up for us opportunity-wise. Like, we don't have a lot of opportunities. So, for 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 young kids and shit, like, in Baltimore, like, it ain't a whole lot for them to do, for real. It ain't a lot of opportunity. If you go outside and just look around, it's not even a good and I never knew that really until I, you know, got into my own life and started moving around and, and living my own life. And, you know, me, you know, I like to live, like I was telling you out when we was out smoking and shit, you know, I live around people who probably never came up in the areas that I came up in. You know what I'm saying? So once I started seeing shit for what it was. A perception. Yeah, my perception. I started looking at it like, shit, what you expect from them kids if, you know, I go outside and this is all I see. I don't see no kind of opportunity. I got to do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we in one of those cities where you just got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Because there ain't a lot of opportunities and shit. Hopefully you can figure out a way. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I figured out a way for real. I figured out a way to to stop living like that. You know what I'm saying? But everybody ain't going to figure out a way. You know, so I would just tell a youth to figure out your way. And it ain't no one way. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people might have looked down on the way I took. You know what I'm saying? But it really ain't no one way, for real. You know, because I know some people who who went to college and got degrees and shit and never got jobs in that particular situation. Or they never, even if they did, they never got rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I say rich, I mean. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, it's like yeah. you, you pick the career that caps at a certain point. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. You'll always be in the in the in the negative because you'll always owe the bank because everything you really do is pretty much on credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, everybody got their own little way. You know, I I would just say you know I, I think I figured out a way. Figure out your way. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you can figure out a way coming from this motherfucker, shit, you can make it anywhere. Cause you know this this a fucked up city, bro. Yeah. Ain't no opportunity here, bro. How would you describe the Baltimore style to like an outside, like like me being from Columbia? How would you like give me the rundown of Baltimore style, and then tell me about your style? Like, how do you pick your clothes? Like when you when you see in the store, like how do you know you want to take a, like a certain item home with you? Um, I don't know. I'm just a fashion guy. Like, and I'm in my own lane. Like, it sometimes um, I go with trends too. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, you know, I was wearing the Murray's last year. I wear like a lot of denim tears and gallery jeans and shit now. So that's kind of like trendy because it, it's like the fashion like goes. I remember my mother and them saying that. Like, we used to wear shit oh, yeah. as kids, and my mother used to be like, we used to wear that back in the day. That's just coming back. You know, so I kind of understood that fashion is like a revolving door, you know. And um, so I stay up to date with the fashion. Um, shit, 
I got my own style though. Like I said, I be trying to like, I don't like being like everybody for real. I mean, I might wear shit everybody wear too, for real. But if it don't fit me, like I'm not one of them niggas that's trying to be down so much where I'm wearing shit just because everybody wearing it and it don't even fit me for real. Like them Pradas and shit. Yeah, the glasses. The um, the patent leather ones. Oh, the, oh, the shoes, the shoes, yeah. The Prada shoes and shit. I never wore them, bro. Like, you, ain't, you ain't like when they revamp either? That was a big thing in Baltimore, even the revamp. That don't fit me. Bro, I'm like a fat tennis shoe nigga. Like, yeah. you see, I'm wearing, like, big soul Balenci's and shit. I'm like a, like, even before this shit was fashion-wise, like, I was wearing big-ass fucking phone posits and Tim Duncan's and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never was, like, a flat shoe type nigga for real. What about Timberlands? Tim's was my shit back in the day. I had a Timberland endorsement deal in 2017, 2016. How how that come about? I had my own Timberland. Um, um, I used to wear Timberlands a lot. Um, and on my Instagram, I just always wore Timberlands. Like I said, I had my own style, so I wore a lot of Timberlands, and my music was taking fire. And shout out to Hundred Grand Man. Hundred Grand had reached out to me, and took me to uh, Sean Season them down at Downtown Locker Room, and um. We worked out um, an endorsement of a, an exclusive Timberland that they wanted to drop, and they gave me um, rights to uh, promote it exclusively as my my signature boot. It was through Sean C's in downtown locker room, and they distributed my album at the time, the Neighborhood Superstar album. I had like a distribution deal with them and all that at the time. So shout out to Sean Caesar. That shit was worked out through him at the time. Yeah, and then, and then y'all um, and then you got something that you work you, that you doing now too, right? The sprinter, um, GGL. the tennis shoe, yeah, yeah, the GGL sprinter, um, that was a collaboration with um Mike Beasy and a distributor out in Asia that um, it was just an idea that I had, man. Like yeah. you know, I'm a tennis shoe, I'm a fashion guy, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm always trying to figure out ways to dive into the fashion world because a lot of people look to me like they know, like, you know what I'm saying, like that I'm going a, I'm to a do the drip shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like it's only right that I kind of get into that world. So that was me toying with it, just trying to figure it out for real. You know, I'm going to have a lot of shit coming in the future, though, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like in that, in that, in that lane. But the GGL Sprinters was, um, it was a good experience, man. I, I um... I designed and, and, and dropped some shoes and they sold within a week. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even keep up with distributing that shit myself because I wasn't like going to be, you know, it just, it made me see, you know, what my influence could do and what I need to do, you know, you know when I set right. forth a plan and do it. That was just an idea I had and I did it just off of like instinct for real. Broke a nigga heart when I heard Vic told I swear to God I got some niggas from the other side Who want me dead, I keep a 50 on me every day Yo, it's Floaters TV We live, we got a special guest, special episode We got a Baltimore legend, GGL Slick What's up, man? I'm in the building, yeah. float away Yo, I wanted to start off by asking you, like So what do you think about, like, real estate? Like, you ever think about getting into real estate? Um, yeah, yeah, um, real estate, not like a easy as people think for real. Like I know a lot of people that deal with real estate and it's always like a difficult thing with, um, like getting spots and, and getting them up the cold yeah. and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. You know what I mean? It's like a tedious process for real. Um. So just like on the on the on the face of it, you know, the average person to think that's a good thing to get into. Not to say it, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I like a a, a clear turnabout. You like know a, what I'm saying? Yeah, like a like a sure investment bet. Yeah, like a sure investment bet. That's that's and it can be, you know, if you invest your time into it, that's just not something that I haven't like really put my focus on for real. I know you know you you think more about the music. It's more than music, like it's about yeah, like for sure. expanding the business. What do you what do you um think the importance is in um investing in yourself? Um, it's everything. It's everything. Like whatever you do, like let's just say the music. 
a label or like anybody wouldn't want to invest in you until they see you. And they wouldn't be able to see you unless you took some time to put some investment into yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever you're into, like just say like the podcasting or whatever. If you ain't take the time to buy these cameras and lights right. and, and microphones and stuff like that, like nobody would never really know nothing about, you know, your talent. Right. So like investing in yourself is like the number one fundamental thing to do. Like you got to start there. Like if you're not willing to really um, bet it all on yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even sometime if, you know, you put it all on the line and, and you fall flat, that's like a ball player when he taking that game winning shot and he miss. You know, that don't mean the next game you don't take that shot again. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So you just got to keep investing in yourself. That shit, like, key. It key. Did you have to make a lot of sacrifices to, like, invest in yourself, get GGL going? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you sacrifice your time. You know, you sacrifice the time that, you know, with your with your with your your family, shit like that. Like I took a lot of time in the studio. I took a lot of time just, you know, um out trying to promote the brand, you know, right. and, and doing that sometimes is is not always music based. It's sometimes just going out to the clubs and connecting with the people, like showing your face and shit like that. So like, yeah, like I sacrificed my time. Um, I I even kind of sacrificed some of my personal, my personal uh, like um, like goals. No, nah, not like personal goals, but I kind of put my personal shit kind of to the side because like once I started doing music, I became you know the character slick for real. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So like now people ain't even looking at you like the regular person. Like it's like a disadvantage. Kind of, sort of, it's an advantage to it too, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you know how to use it, it's like tricky for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's one of my questions. Like, how was it having to, like, go through go through years and, like, develop as a man, like, underneath the spotlight of, of being slick, the rapper, with the notoriety and the success? Yo, it was, it's, it, that shit became sickening for real after a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because, like, you'll start the your friends, your family – people will start to look at you different. They'll start to treat you different. You know what I'm saying? They'll start to require shit from you because they feel like you got it. Or, you know what I'm saying, you in the spotlight. So, you know, people might, you know, see your family members or see your friends and, you know, bypass their day and say, man, what's up with Slick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So now you become like the the point of... The talking, uh, the talking piece. Yeah, the talking piece. And, 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 and that's not always good. Sometimes that shit come with envy. Sometimes that shit come with, you know, jealousy. Some people, you know, feel like you owe them some shit. Right. Because, you know, they might have let you sleep on their couch 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, that shit came with a lot of fuckery, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of fuckery. It'll definitely weed out the, 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 the true, like, the real people. The people who really fuck with you for you and not just because, you know, they think you who you is or for what you got. Right. How how do you weed them out? Um, or like, what's the easiest like sign to weed somebody out? Tell them no. You know, don't do something for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's been most of the time. You know, you you know, and and even you know that shit gonna come out. That shit just gonna reveal itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Life just going to reveal itself, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit, they just going to reveal their hand eventually because it's only so long that you can pretend, especially when you're a star. Like, I'm a shining light. Right. So, like, I'm going to stay beaming. It ain't never going to go out. So, eventually, you know, either you're going to put some shades on and get with it or, you know, you're going to zap the fuck out one day and really expose who you really is and say you don't even fucking like, you like the darkness. You want to be in the dark. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now let's go back to the beginning, but just from like the the manifestation of to where you are now to everything that you, that you accomplished, everything you did. Um, can can you tell me what VA Records was like? What VA stood for? Where I'm from, like I'm from Veronica Avenue. That's like a part of Cherry Hill. That's not like it's gone. They ripped that shit down. Like the people came 
that shit was treacherous. Like, I grew up in a real, like, treacherous-ass neighborhood in Cherry Hill. Like, you know what I'm saying? Back in the 90s and shit. Like, they they ripped that motherfucker down. You know what I'm saying? So, like, gentrified? Um, no, they never did anything to it. Like, okay. that shit like a garden now. Like, they, they never did, like, if, um, if you ever do the history on, like, Baltimore City, like, high-rise projects and shit, like, they ripped all of them down, like, in the late 90s. And when they did that, um, they took our block with it, and our shit wasn't even high rise. But you know, I guess it was some political shit. It was a lot of young, a lot of teenage niggas that was getting a lot of money, a lot of crack money and shit, and dope money and shit. And a lot of them niggas that I grew up under was kids for real, right? With guns and money, so they took our shit and got them niggas the fuck out of there, type shit. So VA, that's Veronica Avenue. And that's what I, you know, I, I, I represent as a kid. My block, and that was like always a dream to have like VA records. Like I always knew I wanted to do the music shit though. I, I was born for that shit. Like this shit wasn't nothing that I, I like. Like I said, like I was always the little nigga that knew all the songs and shit. I was the little nigga that are getting back onking them car and, and rap the songs and shit at six and seven. Right. So like I always, you know, I wrote a rap at the talent show in school. You know what I'm saying? I was in the fourth grade. So, like, I always been attracted to just the whole culture of hip-hop. Like, the, the dressing, the style, the, like, everything. Like, I embody that shit. Like, I'm really that that shit just, like, natural. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm raw rap. Like, Slip. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Hey, so, um, so I told you this is one of the biggest interviews that I've done so far. I appreciate you that yeah. you come on the platform. Appreciate so, you having me. Thank you. So, you know, it's different when I can say, yo, I'm about to interview Slick, and somebody can be like, yo, yo, you got to ask him this. You go, you, yeah. Yo, you should ask him this, da, da, da. So this is this is new to me, and I feel like that's that's an advantage in, in this episode. Yeah. But um, so so my man's Flop, he, he's a big fan of yours. Okay. Um, He wants to know who influenced your style, because he says you have one of the dopest styles he ever heard. So he wants to know, like, where did you get that influence? What did you get influenced by? Um, I think I was heavily influenced by like uh the No Limit Cash Money 36 wave. Like that was like the wave I came up in. For real. Like that was like the artists I really fell in love with and knew all of their shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like when you hear, you know, my style. You know, if you ever go back and listen to like a three six catalog, like you'll hear like like some of that kind of just the way that they flow on certain type of shit. You know what I'm saying? I kind of got my cadence from that type of shit. Yeah, then it's like that, it's yeah. like a hit making method. Yeah, then like the cash money feel. You know what I mean? That's why I get my splash, like my my shit talking, because I was a big cash money baby fan. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like you'll hear me like talking shit like at the end of the song or saying some shit, some real fly shit, you know what I'm saying? That's like that cash money. Then like that no limit shit, I'll be, I, you know, that be kind of like my beat process for real. I always get that, that knock and snare and like that beat by the pound type. That's the shit I come up off of. So speaking of um no no limit, um I heard like in 2014 that you, you met Master P. Yeah, for sure. What, what was that, what was that experience like? Hey, the crazy part is, man, like, dreams just always come true, like, if you chase them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and, um, me and my partner, Skino, we had put together the song, Master P. We put Moose on the song, and the song went crazy. That was, like, the song that really got me, like, acknowledgement in the city for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I probably started, like, really, really going hard probably the year before that. So, like, in 2014, it was going crazy. And um, I just started connecting the dots. Shout out Caddy to Don. And, um, you know, it was a few other people that I just started connecting the dots and, and rubbing elbows. And it got me to L.A. to P. Because okay. he was in, in, in California at the time. And um, we worked the situation out because Moose was on the song. And Moose had a relationship with Boosie. And Boosie was already doing the show. And we worked it out where P would come and 
come out on the set when we do Master P and shit like that. But Moose had went to jail, but P still came and held up to his obligation and shit. We got to meet him. We got to meet Romeo and shit like that. So it was like a real big, big thing for us at the time. So what what are some of the differences and the advantages, disadvantages of the rap game in 2014 around that time to the rap game right now? Um, I don't know, bro. It seemed like it's it's better for real. It seemed like to me it got better because you got to think like in the city, like we in Baltimore, is like it's kind of like when I when I when I got into the music shit, it was kind of like it was just starting for real. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, like it was rappers that came out before that for real, but like the fans and the people in Baltimore ain't really embrace it. Like when we came, shit, like you had people riding around listening to that shit. So it like changed the game. So it was like the start. So like now that is like seven, eight years later, whatever like that, I feel like it's got, it's like it's better. Like it's just like a better, it's set up already. Like, your fans know, like, if you, you know, you can get new fans if you want. Like, because now it's like a real ball game in Baltimore, for real. Like, Baltimore, people listen to Baltimore rappers and shit. You know, DMV, for real, because you got people in D.C., you know what I'm saying? You got people in West Virginia, you got people in Pennsylvania. Shit, I done been in some wild spots and motherfuckers and been like, yo, slick. Like, you know what I'm saying? They listen to that shit. So, you know, I, I I done been in, like, Philly and shit. And like I got some some niggas up there I be fucking with like and them niggas was fucking with YGG Tay and shit like that so like yeah we 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 got like a fan base now so it's like more easier you know before it was like we was creating a fan base for real right yeah so it's like all good now to me anyway do do you feel it's more about popularity than skill nowadays for sure though and do you feel the need to try to fit into that popularity contest man listen. It's crazy. I'm fortunate enough to just always been like a top dog, like meaning like I'm me. You know what I'm saying? Like I never been one of them type of niggas that I always try to fit in because I stand out. Like I want to stand out. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to get the shit you ain't got. I want you to follow my trend. But I do. I, you know, I'm a trend nigga too, though. Like I'm current as a motherfucker. I'm into what I'm into. But you know, I ain't one of those ones that that's chasing. Whatever. So I say that to say, you know, I think I was fortunate enough with just being me and people, you know, gravitating towards who I was. I ain't had to fake it. I ain't had to try to be try want to be down with everybody. And you know what I'm saying? Like I be in my own little world. I fuck with everybody and shit like that. But I ain't like a want to be down brandy ass nigga or shit like that. Like, cause the city like that though. Because if you ain't like a lot of times. If you ain't really fucking with the who's who's and shit like that, you will be like, like they they won't embrace it. You know what I'm saying? As much. You know what I'm saying? Because you got some niggas that might got some popularity, right? That might, music might be trash. Artistry-wise, might be trash as fuck. But like if you got some clout, you know what I'm saying? Like shit, you'll have some people act like your shit hard as a bitch. Yeah. And the niggas who hard... You know what I mean? Probably get looked over because they might ain't got the paper or the look or whatever like that. So I always equate that to, like, I look at the game like, I study the game like on some business shit. Like, if you look at Atlanta, you know, they flourished because, you know, you you had artists that was that was, that was was hard as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But them niggas probably ain't had the look or the money. But you got some niggas that had the money right. and shit like that. But, and they knew these niggas was hard as fuck. And they had good art. They going to put the money behind that shit. In Baltimore, motherfuckers just going to say, fuck the niggas with the art. I ain't even going to put no money behind You got to get your own and come up on your own. And, and most times, you know, the niggas who got the popularity, you know what I'm saying? Um, it just be like the money and the, the clout for real. So me, I embrace the art though. You know what I mean? I always embrace the art because I'm an artist first for real. Like, I'm just, like I said, I'm fortunate. I'm one of them niggas that just happen to be both. I'm happen to be myself and people gravitate towards me and what I do. And I'm a part of the culture and shit like that. What does family mean to you? Family, that's everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? And just, just uh, as men, for real. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of the ones that take that shit real serious. Like, my father got killed, bro, when I was a baby. 
You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and I just seen a lot of me, like me and my guys, and just, you know, a lot of guys pure. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I take fatherhood real serious and really lead my family. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. starting there, like, that's, like, my thing for real. Like, being a leader in my, you know, in my family with my kids and with the women that's, you know, in my family and shit like that. I just be wanting to make sure I'm on man time and I'm giving them the right, you know, direction and, and encouragement or whatever the case may be at that time. So, like, I'm on manhood real big. So, like, family is, like, everything to me. Like, I got to take time out of my week, you know, at all times just to spend time with my kids and my family and shit like that, just to stay grounded and just to stay focus on what's what's important for real and so, so I, i've been i've been in a studio session with um with um tiggity and and a couple of other ggl members keenan and um and one thing i was in there like a fly on the wall like i had my camera out you know i was doing like a vlog and um one thing i heard was and it was from tiggity he was like yo he was like uh say he falling back for a little bit we gotta really Grab the torch and really, really run with it, showing that we can really do this. And that's when, um, I that's when I got like a a big understanding of like who you were without yeah. even knowing you, because yeah. that that's um it's powerful because music is, it, it saves life. So yeah. if it can bring us together, because like they in the studio, like it's like cohesiveness. Like yo, you got your verse, what it sound like? Yo, this this my verse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, you might need to. That's hard, but. This might be harder, you know what I'm saying? So, I got, I got a lot of respect for you all, just off of that one line I heard. Love, appreciate it, my baby. Yeah. So, how? Tell, tell me how, like, um. <laughs> yeah, hold up, bro. That should probably sound cool on the in the background, though. The probably got to show it, show it on the camera. It's gonna be on the vlog. All right. All right. But um, Lou, chill out, chill. But how, how do that how do that start though? Like, is it just leading by example? That's like no, yeah, leading by example. Just I mean, like me, brother. Like I don't want to get too like into, um, um, like a spiritual conversation or nothing like that. But everybody like got like a, um. A journey for real. Everybody got like a purpose for real. You know what I'm saying? And like I just, you know, started tapping into my purpose kind of like early on as a teenager. Like I always had friends that trusted me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I said, yo, let's, let's go on to school and steal the fucking paper out the desk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I had friends that was like, fuck it, let's do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? They trusted me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, everybody don't have that ability, for real. I realized that, like, you know, I used to get locked up and shit and go to jail, and I always meet niggas, and, you know, we'd come home, and these niggas would ride or die for me. You know what I'm saying? So I realized that I had leadership ability, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, once I started doing this music shit and putting together, you know, the label and shit like that, you know, I... You know, I'm an organizational type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? And and then, like I said, like, I'm just a natural with just being leading the pack, for real. Just just showing by example. Just taking the torch and running with it and saying, my nigga, let's go. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, you know, I gained the trust of, of some good people. You know what I'm saying? To just trust in me enough to say, shit, we with it. And you, it's, power, it's so powerful that do you ever feel it could be misused? Yeah, it definitely can. Like, I, I've seen, like, shit. I've seen a lot of niggas in the driver's seat, you know what I'm saying, crash out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas get the number one seat and crash out. You know what I mean? Because it come with a lot. You know what I mean? Like, if you got people that, 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 that trust you, that'll do anything for you, that's a certain sense of power. You know what I mean? And we from the streets. You know what I'm saying? So you might have some niggas that's willing to kill for you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, anybody with that type of power, you know what I mean? You know, you might have some people that'll go out here and make you a million dollars. You know what I mean? Now, you you fucking, you got money, you got power, shit. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, you know, that shit just ain't for them. You know what I mean? That's why I said, you know, you got to tap into who you really are for real. 
You know what I mean? And when you know who you really are, like, as a leader, like, you know that, you know, you ain't blessed with that type of shit just for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you giving these gifts to give them out. Right. Like you know I mean? Yeah, like, you can't keep them to yourself. Like, uh, if you a leader, for real, you meant to lead because you meant to show a motherfucker, huh, I'm trying to show you something. Give it, I'm giving it to you. You feel what I'm saying? It ain't yeah. really for you. Like, it's for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to get the fruits of this shit, but you got to get that shit out. Yeah, other people other people might benefit benefit off it more than you do. Yeah, yeah, this free game. Like, you got to get the game out, like, because you got it. You got the game. My nigga, yeah. he gave it to you. He gave you the game. You showing him. You, 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 you put together. That's how I look at shit anyway. What's some free game you can give me, like, trying to get the flow to start? And it's, it's been, like, our first year. We, like... Picking up motion as they can see, you know. Yeah, I would just say stay focused. You know what I'm saying, and 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 try not to, try not to stay closed in. You know, try to reach out. Try to, you know, a lot of people be stuck in their pride for real. A lot of people, like it's egotistical for real. Right. You know what I'm saying. Like for instance, like, you know, um, you know, I'm a humble guy, my nigga. I, yeah, I you know what I'm saying. I, yeah, I appreciate. I'm a, I'm a humble guy. You know what I'm saying, and I think that shit like pay off in the long run. I mean, I could be bougie too. I could be arrogant too at times. You know what I mean. But at the heart of that shit, I'm a humble guy. So you know, I don't mind connecting. You know, to get the job done for real. Like if you know you got a goal that you're trying to reach, just stay focused on that and do the work. You know what I'm saying. Like don't stay closed in on. You know, just thinking the work gonna come to you. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you just got to go out here and get that shit, you know, in a major way and just keep going at it for real. You know, like this, this was a good um, situation and it, shit, you just got to attack it from there. Like, keep going and keep going. This, you already doing good enough that I acknowledge it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, thanks. shit, I follow the page. You know, I like the work. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I would just say keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, speaking about being number one, I heard that um I heard in the documentary that you said it wasn't even supposed to be you that was the star, it was supposed to be Butch. Yeah. So what but, was it like not to cut you off, what was it like to be like had you had that number two mindset? And the number two mindset, it takes being humble and doing whatever has to has to be done. So what was the transition like? Um good question. Originally, man, like I said, I always looked up to, like, no limit in cash money and shit like that. So when we started doing this music shit, I kind of thought I was going to be like like a like a bird man. You know what I'm saying? Like a nigga that, you know, I had the label and shit, but I had some niggas who was, who was, who was, who was hard, who was harder than me. You know, I thought they was harder than me. You know, I had Butch who was really, really trying to, you know, do the music shit. He had a hundred raps and shit like that in his book bag. You know, I had Skino, I had Skate that was uh you know, that was trying to do the music, but you know, we, we started recording and we started putting out uh we put out a mixtape and shit. And um I got on a couple of songs and shit. And we took the shit to the hood and a lot of people shit, they 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 went crazy about my verse and shit. Cause they, you know, I always was a shit talking like little nigga anyway, like you know what I'm saying. They called me slick, so like I always was the type of nigga to talk a lot of shit. So when I started rapping and shit, shit like niggas gravitated towards my shit, and then Butch went to jail. We all went to jail, you know what I'm saying. And um, when I came back, shit, we just started recording, and we really, you know, was trying to focus in on Skino. And people just gravitated towards, you know, towards my, my, my music. And I just knew, you know, I knew that it was more than just, you know, at first I was thinking niggas, niggas, niggas could rap better than me. So I ain't really want to be like the, in the front for real. Cause I felt like niggas could rap better than me for real. You know what I'm saying? But like once we started moving and it started going on, I started realizing that it was like, it's more than just the rap and shit. Like they fucking with me. Like they fucking with my character. Like they fucking with, you know what I'm saying? They 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 fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? So that gave me like the confident boost to like fuck just who could rap the best. Like I, I got, you know, I and I had the desire and the drive for real. You know what I'm saying? So I knew at that point it was like 
I got to take the front seat for real. Because they the people, you know, one thing I know about, you know, doing this shit, like, for real, like, it ain't really about you personally, for real. It's what the people really like. You know what I'm saying? You can personally like that shit all day long. If the people don't like that shit, then, you know what I'm saying? You know, the shit that I was liking, shit, like I said, like, Skeeno and Butcher and shit, them niggas was better than me. But the people, the people was like a snick, so you shit. I was like, you know what? Let me take advantage of this opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And gravitate the fans. So we'll get back to the blueprint later, in, in which we did. So, you know, because cause, you saying they names now. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it worked for real. And so um, with GGL, so like, like when I was in the session and and I heard you was thinking about falling back or falling back for a little bit, is that because you're, you're trying to make be more of like an executive than an artist nowadays? That too. It was just a lot of shit. Like I said, bro, like what we was talking earlier about just becoming that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like me just just over the you know, over the years of doing this shit, like becoming, you know, the main figure of the shit. You know what I'm saying? That shit came with a lot of shit that drank me, bro. Like that shit really drained me. It just made me just wanna say, fuck this shit. Cause it's like it ain't even it ain't like just my source of, you know, I, I get paid off of the shit. You know, it pays some of my bills and shit like that, but it ain't my main source of income. So it was like, it was, it became like more of a headache for real at a point. It was like, man, people to get weird as shit. <laughs> it's like a burden. People get weird, man. I'm telling you, this shit get weird. It get wicked. Yeah. It get wicked. You know what I'm saying? Like, it get wicked with family and friends and just, you know, just people who think they know you and shit. Shit, I had people who ain't know me from a can of paint. But because I was rapping and I was in the rap beef, I had regular old niggas calling me bitch-ass niggas and all kind of shit in the DM and all kind of shit. Like, this shit just get crazy and weird as fuck. And that shit a drain a nigga like me because I ain't used to that. Yeah. Like, I ain't used to nobody playing with and all that. Like, I'm used to... Like I'm from Cherry Hill, bro. Like it's real. Like it ain't no, it ain't like drive-bys and all that niggas walking down. So like I come from the type of environment where it's like it's intimate, personal. So like I had to adjust and regroup and shit. Like a lot of that shit got weird as a motherfucker, my nigga. That's why, really. And you know, I really wanted to focus on some other shit and tighten up on some other business shit and focusing on, um restructuring ggl because like i said you know initially coming out you know everybody want to jump on the bandwagon shit the team was big as fuck you feel what i'm saying yeah, that'd be like, crazy yeah but over time you know shit have change you know what i'm saying like that's why i said like i shit my star been shining for like a minute for real it ain't like you know some of these niggas in and out you know, my star been shining for a minute so i've been through a lot of ups and downs i done had people I done had management steal from me. I done had mismanagement. You know what I'm saying? I done had gripes with entertainment lawyers and, and different shit that'll drain you and, and, and just have you, you know, to fuck your head up with you to the point where you like, fuck this shit because this ain't what's, paying, what's really when I'm making my money like that. Like, come on. You know what I mean? But I regrouped, though. You know what I'm saying? I just had to step back from some shit and just look at some shit what it was and I had to shave some shit down and get some people to fuck away from me. Yeah. For real. It'd yeah. be like that though. You gotta scale and grow. It's like It'd be like that. Sometimes yeah. you outgrow people. Yeah. yeah. So what what is this what is it that, that brings you back? Is it is it the love for the music? Is the is it is it the business? For sure. It's really just the love for real. Like like I said, I'm a natural music lover for real. Like hip hop is just like rap, bro. Like that's just me. Like that's just a part of it always been you know i've been writing raps and shit since i was seven eight years old and shit like that so it's just my love for it i'm always do it and you know i built up a fan base you know i built up a fan base and i built up my own lane for real i don't think there's nobody who do what i do for real so it's like you know if i do decide to like all right fuck it i ain't fucking with it like you got hella people that's like we need it. Like, they hitting me every day. Like, we need this shit. Like, fuck is you doing? Like, because ain't nobody going to tap into that vein like I'm going to tap into that vein. Yeah. 
And it's hard work at the end of the day. Yeah, these niggas scared. Like, these niggas scared. I'm the one that's going. I'm the one that's going. I'm going to deliver it. You know, I'm going to deliver it like I'm on CNN. And I done went down in the fucking trenches of fucking Saudi Arabia when they the kids got the AKs and shit like that. And they shooting and banging and the bombs going off. And I'm right there reporting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm just saying when you really dive yeah, like into Slay, the catalog. Like, like Slater Road. Them niggas ain't going to speak. You know what I'm saying? Chopper hit him in his leg. People had to amputate it. The other nigga wasn't lucky. Doctor said he didn't make it. You can read about it in the comments on the very egg page. Everybody wanted you to die. You was just a nigga in the way. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is how we really talk. Yeah. Like, that's how we really talk. Like, we sitting there like, yo, <laughs> look at the comments. Like, yo, it's a dumb, stupid bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is how we really talk. So, you know, these niggas will be scared. They'll try to make it so fancy, or you know what I mean? And that's all good. I love that shit, too. But shit, Slick going to bring it in a way where it's going to touch the people who, you know, it's it, the culture, the lifestyle of the shit. You know what I'm saying? If you live in that shit. Yeah. Then you know, you know what I'm saying. And, and even if you're not, you know, I got people who, like I said, you know, they 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 watch the news, you know what I'm saying. So you might not even be involved in that type of shit, but you know, the the, the slick verse is gonna be so captivating. It's like you saw, like you just said, slay the road. It felt like you was you was there, like mm-hmm. you know, Vic, like you, you like damn, like that was a mean story. Yeah, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna pull you into the. To the you know to the tale because these real hood tales and shit like that. So yeah, it's like I want to ask if it's real, but then it's like I don't feel the need. I don't even think I have to type. All of it real base. Like all everything is based on the culture. You know what I'm saying? This go get his lifestyle. Like this the way you know, you know this 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 what I get when I'm when I'm out. You know I mingle with the culture. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with the with the younger guys. I fuck with the middle age. You know I fuck with the older OGs and shit like that. So like shit, like, and I'm a sponge, like I'm I'm an artist, so I'm a nigga who, it might not necessarily be me, for, for instance, for real. Like a lot of times, I might be rapping from like, my homeboy perspective for real, because I be around him and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I might be saying some shit that, you know, he told me or I watched him do, you know what I'm saying? Like, so all of it real based, it might not be shit that I'm doing. You know, because my life, and again, it might be some shit that, from the past, you know, I gotta, my star been lit, bro, like, since birth, bro, like, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm I'm fortunate as fuck, bro, I promise you, like, shit, you already got the word, I don't even wanna say ask about me, cause shit, this shit been, I'm blessed, bro, you know what I'm saying, and that's why, you know, I like to come around and shine my light on, you know, shit. Whatever, because we all stars and shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the stars got a line, though. You know what I'm saying? For that shit to illuminate over the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we got, got a room full of stars right now. We got room full of stars right now. You see, I got my man in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just glad that, you know what I mean? You know, and fortunate enough to have to, to be here because, you know, a lot of niggas that live the type of life that I live, you know, them niggas dead and gone, bro. My cousin called me the other day from jail. He said, bro, you a living legend. You know what I'm saying? Because I could have died. I could have went to jail, shit, five, six, seven, ten, fifteen 10, 15 years ago and would have been legendary. Would have been one of them niggas like, yo, remember, yo, when he was X, Y, and Z? But shit, I'm one of them niggas that's still living. And, you know, you, you can meet some niggas that can tell you some stories about Slick. You know what I'm saying? About Slick standing on business. About Slick just being on manhood. You know what I'm saying? About Slick just being, you ain't gonna hear no fuck shit. Yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. And 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 for that to be that way, you know, I'm proud of that. You know, because I stand on that. You know, my name. I stand on that. You know what I mean? I never did fuck shit, bro. Like, I'm not on fuck times. Like, I bring good energy to the table. I'm on good business. Shit, fuck with Slick. You know, he gonna fuck around and get you rich. Yeah. But on the other hand, he can fuck around and get your head hit. One of slick lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, so so um, how'd you get in that bag when you made made trips to Michigan? Trips to Michigan, um, the mixtape, man. Like I said, man, I'm one of them type of people that's just tapped into the music, and like I, I'm in influ- I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a fan for real. So like when um 
like the whole Michigan wave came. Like if you notice now, like you hear a lot of different like uh, Michigan based production for real. Right, like you know what I'm a lot of shit. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Even down to like the cadence and shit like that. With a lot of people, you know, when 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 that wave came before it came in, you know, I just you know I'm a fan of music, so I gravitated towards like a lot of Michigan artists early on for real. Like I was listening to PZ and Payroll and Damn John Boy and shit like that. Like before, like it really like popped off. So, um, and I was dealing with a few people from Michigan for real. I was, I was, I was, you know, cool with a few people from Detroit for real. So I was like influenced by, you know, that that whole like movement. So. It was just natural. I just wanted to do a mixtape kind of with, with that production because it kind of like kind of fit my style too. You know what I mean? It made sense. It was like a type of thing that fit my style. So me playing on that production was um me. Like you always got to update your app, man. Like that's just like the phones and shit. You notice every couple months and shit, like it'll come with an up, update you got to install. Yeah, fix, so, fix the bugs. Yeah, so me just staying current, I just knew – that I had to update my app. So, you know, getting um, familiar with the Michigan production was, that was me experimenting with it on trips to Michigan. And I kind of found my new... Like I pocket. Kinda, yeah, pocket, you know what I mean? So that's that's what, you know, brought me to doing Infamous. Like, if you listen to my album Infamous, it's slick, but it's like, it's new. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, I merged, you know, I updated my app, for real. So that's what that was. Just me updating my app. Just me diving into the culture of, uh, you know, the Michigan production for real. So you talk about Infamous. That's that's your latest project. It's my latest album, yeah. So um, what what went into making that project? Yeah, uh, um, the Infamous album. Like I said, man, I felt like I I, I found my pocket. You know what I mean? I felt like I was comfortable in like my app was updated. I felt like it was like um. You know, I'm always making music, you know what I'm saying? But when I feel like it's on, like, I felt like it was on, you know what I mean? Like, I did a few songs, and um, it was on. Like, I did the uh, Slater Road. I did the I Need a Driver, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And I dropped those, like, as singles, and they went crazy. So I was like, you know what? I got to drop a project, you know what I'm saying? But I had, like, a bulk of songs in that pocket, you know, that I felt like, you know, once you know, I'm in the gym. I'm in the studio, my nigga, at all times. So when I felt like I felt my pocket, shit, I knew it was time to put out a project. That's like now. Like, you know, I'm in a pocket. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling the shit that I'm making for real. I know the people gonna need to hear that shit. So, you know, I, I just go organically. When I know it's time, you know it's time. So, um, how does it feel like to be able to make these records that people organically fall in love with, you know, it's it's not on the radio, it's not being blasted everywhere, but people know about it. People fuck with it. That shit like everything to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm an artist at heart. Like, as a kid, I drew, you know, I drew pictures and shit. So, like, as an artist, all you really want is somebody to look at your, your painting and say, yo, that shit fire. You know what I'm saying? So, like, as an artist, me putting together music is kind of like just my ideas and my illustration of what I've seen and, you know, how I see the world. So for people to gravitate towards it and, and appreciate it, it's like, you know, it's reassuring for me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you doing what you what you, what you you supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, again, like you said, like, it's not like I'm one of the – the guys that people promoting and pushing on the radio and shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? All my shit organic, like grassroot based. So, you know, that shit, everything to me. Like when people really, it ain't too many places I can go in Baltimore where, you know, a motherfucker don't know me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they recognize me. So it's, it's like, it's bigger than just the music. It's like, that shit everything to me because it's like, it's it, you know, I know they appreciate what I'm doing and putting out because I take my time with that shit. Like, it might sound simplistic, but, like, I take my time and make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm being entertaining 
and that it's art based, you know, even if it's raw street shit, you know, I take my time and make sure I do little shit like incorporate like little snippets or of movies and shit or or just little uh, news clippings or just shit that's going to bring you to a space, you know what I'm saying, entertain you in a way, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm always focusing on, you know, it's not over my head that I'm entertaining people, you know what I'm saying? Like people come, they want to be entertained, even if it's some street shit. A lot of people entertained by seeing people fight, you know what I'm saying? I'm conscious that I'm 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 people's entertainment in a way, you know, but I still want to keep it interesting and I still want to keep it based, you know, artistry based, you know, I'm I'm into the music. So, you know, you're going to hear me with little melodies and 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 little shit like that within me talking shit. Do you pay attention to like the algorithms and these new methods of like, you know, getting on playlists? I do. I mean, I'm 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 familiar with it. Um I'm always telling my guys little shit, but I don't, you know, I don't that shit don't really mean nothing for real to me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's times where shit, my page was just fucking uh like bad for like 30 days Instagram. Um I dropped a BBL video and shit. I had a bunch of like um, ass in the video yeah. And on my posts and shit And they banned my shit from like Explore page And people couldn't search me If you ain't already follow me They like shadow banned me and shit like that yeah. But you know you can't really like You can't really focus in on that type of shit You know my, my old director Spielberg He always used to say Just do the work You know what I'm saying Do the work A lot of times Um you, you, you're not going to get what you think you're supposed to get. Sometimes you might die and shit. And motherfuckers go crazy when you did. So, you know, you can't really focus in, on that type of shit. You got to yeah. do what you love to do and stay focused on the goal. You know, and, and, and that's what I always say. And that's what I was telling you earlier. Um, it was always a goal of mine to just put my music out there for people to appreciate and I think I accomplished that in a major way you know like we was just talking you know people people organically gravitate towards my music and it's been a few years now it's not just one or two songs like I said you know I can go in public and people recognize me and, and it's all love for real like it ain't you know what I'm saying so um I feel like you know I stay focused on what I wanted to do and that's just you know putting out my art putting out my perspective, putting out what I've seen in, in my story for real and having people appreciate it. Like, you know, that's, that's, that's big to me. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, you could, you could, you can die the day or tomorrow. You know, all of us, all of us going to live and die, bro. You know what I'm saying? But everybody not going, going to die a legend. You know what I mean? And some people going to die and we might never speak on them again. You know what I'm saying? Like I was always conscious of, leaving my mark on life, you know what I'm saying, I was always conscious of, you know, some people who die early, they story only go, but so far, you know, like I was telling you, all right, earlier, like, my story is massive, for real, you know, people could talk about me and errors, for real, like, you can go from errors and shit, with this shit, you know what I'm saying, so if I die today or tomorrow, those stories and shit live on, that mean, like, I live on, because people going, like, yo, you know what, yo did that shit like this, I want to do that shit like, yo, you know what I'm saying? They're going to take that shit further and shit. Like, I always knew it was about that, like, leaving your mark. Cause we all going to die. It's just about who you going to die. Like, how you going to die? Like, you going to die nobody or you going to die somebody? Yeah, infamous. Infamous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, slick infamous. Like, I'm the one that, you know, you know, when it's all said and done, it's going to be the, the infamous one, you know, the, the, the one that it ain't the most popular. It ain't the one that they buy fake dick riding, but on the low, they know. You know what I'm saying? On the low, they know like yo, yo, one of them, like yo, laid it down, and ain't and ain't and ain't and ain't had to submit to do it. I did it my way. You know, I do this shit my way. Like I ain't, you know, I ain't out here kissing ass and sucking dick and trying to hang with niggas in these sections and all that shit. Like I got my own shit. Yeah. Now I pop out. I get you know, I come like that. You know, and I'm organic, and like I'm number one independent. You know what I mean? I thrive on that. You know what I mean? That's 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 like a part of my drive. Like I don't really want no 
a bunch of people like help. Like I want, I want to show you that I'm a, I'm a do this shit. Me, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause a lot of people, like I said, I went through ups and downs where a lot of people will feel like you need them or they made you or they, you know, they contributed. Yeah. I'm one to thrive on. Um, I'm going to get that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get it. Right. I'm going to show you that yeah. I'm going to get that shit. Like, I'm going to show you. So, you know, even when, you know, a lot of other guys, you know, that came, when I came, you know, a lot of them niggas might have had a song and they might have had a lot of city to get behind it. They might have DJs playing that shit in the club, select on Sundays and shit, your four, your own fucking, whatever the case may be. You know, and them niggas came and went. You know what I mean? And, and you still, you know, got slick that, you know, got a song. We talked Slater Road. We were just talking about Master P. That shit was in 2014. Right. I dropped Slater Road in 2022. You know what I'm saying? You know, it takes... Everybody ain't gonna be able to do that, bro. You know, everybody ain't gonna be able to even stay relevant enough. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people not really doing what they really... You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas just doing this shit because it's cool to do, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is really what I'm into. Like, this ain't no game and no no joke. I was made for this shit. Right. Like, this was... <laughs> yeah, like, I was made for this shit, bro. Like, real shit. You probably can make a song in, like, 30 minutes. I don't write none of my shit. Yeah. Bro, I used to write. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's I came up... You probably can record... The, that's what I'm saying. You can record the whole song. For man. sure. I record songs all the time. 30 minutes. Like, all the time. Like, cause it's organic. Like it's like we was talking about that shit not too long ago. We was in the studio and Tig was saying like, "Yo, nigga, just got to say, you know, fuck that shit. that's going at you know, cause I be doing that shit. You know what I mean? It's like it. You you gotta have a certain confidence though to be able to. You know that came over the years, over me, over the years of me realizing like, yo, people fuck with me. So like, you know, I don't never want overthink it. Like I don't never want. You know, I want to give them me raw, like as it is and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm giving them, I'm going in that bitch and and whatever on my mind at that moment, whatever I'm coming up with at that moment. You know, the whole infamous album was recorded like that. Like I, you know, I don't have never one of those lyrics in my phone or nothing. Like I went in there and spit them all, just you know how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I carved out that type of lane. You know, because I created that lane from the jump, it ain't, you know, it ain't like I got to stick to somebody else. Formula. Formula and shit, for real. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got my own lane and shit, so the yeah. people fuck with me. They fuck with Slick. Yeah. Ain't, um, ain't, any, um, any projects coming out soon? I got a new project coming next month. For real? Yeah, I got a new project coming next month. We got a compilation coming. Um... We got uh, a mixtape and an album from Tiggity coming. Um, we got an EP from Skano coming. We got an EP from Skate coming. So, yeah, it's it's the winter shit is ready to get cold. Fourth quarter, we've been working all summer for real. You know what I'm saying? Us is like a brand. Us is just a label and a team. Like, we've been in the studio. Um, Content. Yeah, we've been in the studio and, and just outside of the studio. Like I said, man, we dealing with, like you see now, I'm vlogging. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got just a, a, a new team of people. Just, like I said, we re-ramped and just ready to to, to to put this shit back out there full force. Like, for real. Yeah. I bet. Anything else, anything else you, um, you want to get off? I enjoyed you, my baby. I appreciated you having me. Man, keep going up, man. This was Thank a you, fucking... Bro. This was a, a good ass. I can't even say good. This was like one of my best interviews. I was surprised by Thank some of the you. questions that 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 you asked, man. You like naturally meant to do this shit. So, shit, man. Thanks for having me. Shit, the floaters, GGL.